I enjoy being on the front lines of saving lives. And my faith Islam inspired my career. Welcome to our Ampact Radio Talk Show. And uh, here on our chief operation of Million, Million Muslim March. And our host tonight is Sahaj. Assalamu alaikum. Tonight our agenda will be discussing four topics. Number one, Muslim community and socio-political involvement. Number two, theology and the politics, how they interact each other. Number three, Million Muslim March press conference on January the 10th at the Ground Zero of New York City. Thank you, Isa Hajj. Okay, so uh, basically, you know, what we'll be uh, speaking about tonight, uh, one of the, the four topics that I'm, that I'm uh, interested in actually uh, talking about is, uh, how does politics and religion mix? Right, that's that that's one of the topics. If you want to pick pick on that, that's why theology and politics and how that could be uh, integrated to our social uh, uh, life, balancing the both together. Right, and, and you know, and this is the this is a, a topic that I'm uh, I'm always quite interested in, uh, simply because. The fact that our country was not founded on any specific religion, it was actually founded off of the principles of religion. It was founded off uh, the very foundation and principle of democracy. Is actually, uh, you know, I, the ideas uh, came from religion. Uh, Islam is one of them. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was known to own a Quran and uh, taught himself to read Arabic. And, for those of us that are Muslim that know the Constitution, we can actually see, and I'm going to say a scary word here for, for, for the non-Muslim, you can actually see Sharia law uh, in, uh, in, 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 in the Constitution itself. Now, of course, Sharia law is different than the definition that the media wants to portray it as. Now, Sharia law is just a law that God governs gives us uh, in order to govern our lives. Everything from how we walk into a restroom, uh, how we, you know, how we eat, uh, how we deal with justice, uh, how we deal with prayer. I mean, every aspect of our life is really what uh, Sharia law is. It's just about crime and punishment. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Ten Commandments, uh, different uh, sort of steps than that. But uh, the interesting thing about true democracy. That really religion plays no role in it at all. In fact, it opens the door, a very foundation of constantly opens the door for us to be able to do no religion at all. That politicians after the founding fathers have consistently tried to push religion into law. Uh, they try to squeeze Christianity into democracy. And then unfortunately, the two just they don't fit. Uh, they, they just don't yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this is Ampac Radio, and you are listening our chief operation for Million Muslim March. It's a hutch. Uh, Muhammad Salah, when he was in Medina, the Muslims were only twenty percent of the population. Yet the laws that he created were, and he didn't create. I'm sorry, that that, that Allah gave him to have created for that was held to govern a society that had a multitude of. Uh, of, of lifestyle and religious opinions and all of these things, and a lot of uh, the very foundation of this country is based off of those very same laws that he created uh, in Medina, you know, 14, over 1400 years ago. And so, I, I think that it's important for us as Muslims who are, who are now going to start getting involved in politics and things of that nature that we stay focused and bringing a separation between politics and religion, uh, or remind all those actively listening now and going to listen in the future. Uh, number one, the most important thing that we're trying to do, and, and which is the, 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 the linchpin, uh, is the most important part of this entire um, impact program and, and organization, is that we are fighting for the rights, the civil rights, the freedoms, for Muslims in America, and in turn, because we're doing this, we are hoping and going to be working on and trying to enlighten and open the eyes of the general American and get 
the less cost to all citizens to get them to understand that that there has been a humongous uh, 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 lie, uh, hope, a they've been bamboozled, they've been they've run up, they've run up, okay? They they've been lied to, um, not blatantly by straight out saying, because you won't find any politician uh, or anybody in the media that just flat out said that all Muslims are terrorists. No, they they do it very very subtly. Since 9/11, first they planted the seed that it was Islamic extremists. I mean, this very word, these two words put together in the same sentence is an oxymoron. Uh, they do not belong together. You cannot be an Islamic <coughs> extremist. The, 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 the two words do not go together in any language, whether it's English or Bangladeshi or Arabic or whatever. The two words don't cannot go together. For those of us who understand what the word Islam really means. But the thing to remember is, is that they have been slowly implementing this idea that based off of 9-11, that since 9-11 and because of 9-11 and because the alleged uh, planners of 9-11 were of, uh, by their own accord, the Islamic state, uh, and they have slowly but surely inundated into the American mind through media, through news, through TV, through movies, through music, through, you know, all of these different things, that it is the religion of Islam that warns it, orders it, commands it, and it is a Muslim to a robot to just blindly follow and commit suicide and do all these kinds of things that they say terrorists do. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the American people to wake up and understand. Now, the only way that they can do that is first, they have to see us as exactly what we are, as we're victims. We're the new minorities that are being victimized by being painted a villain. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we do that is if we as Muslims can band together and march and show them that we're Muslim, we're Americans, we're here, and we're going to show the American people something that they have forgotten, that we are banding and exercising our rights of, civil, uh, of, of assembly, freedom of speech, and we're demanding protections, we're demanding laws that protect us as Muslims in this country. We're demanding, the second thing that we're demanding is because this is the biggest thing that has affected Americans, period, Muslim or non-Muslim, doesn't matter, is the fact that our president got a second term. He got his first term based off the fact that he made promises to us as a people that he would make us so he would help us to trust our government again by making it transparent. Lastly, and that I do mean last, we are asking for the release of the full 9-11 commission, not the blacked out version, not the version, the, 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 the children's version, because the government thinks that us as Americans aren't grown up enough to read those words because, you know, all those words that they blacked out, us as Americans, were just too much of a child. You know, that's too dangerous for us. So, uh, first and foremost, remember all of us that are in this impact that we are doing this for the civil rights, for, the, for, for us as Muslims to have the same civil liberties and the same freedom as every other religion in this country does. That we have a right that our name and our religion and, 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 and everything about our faith is no longer slandered or liable things are being printed about us. We have a right to this. We have a right that we don't have to go to Chicago and see that us as people and us as Muslims are barbarians, uncivilized. Or in the subways of New York. And we don't have to have these Burn the Quran days and all this other stuff that these organizations and this government allows and that the media loves to put on 24 hours a new every minute on the hour, every hour, every single day. And the problem, and I just want to share one last thing with, 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 with uh, just back on to the original topic there, uh, uh, about the, the, the religion and, and, and politics mixing. This is, one, this is a prime example of politics and religion mixing. Because they have created a war between all of these Christians that run the, the, the government, the politics, 
against this one. Now, how is that making this a country of bring me your tired, your weary, your weak? How is this the, making that this the land of opportunity? How is that making it so that every American citizen has the inalienable right for the pursuit of happiness? This is no wonder for us as Muslims in this country why it's so hard for any of us to speak up. Why is it so hard for any of them to get involved in politics? Why is it so hard for them to actually stand up and back us on the march and actually go to Washington, D.C.? It's because it is an unfriendly environment that this country has made. And most of them are just thinking, if I just stay quiet, I just keep my head down, I don't make any waves, you know, this will pass and they'll find a new minority and then they'll be off of us and we can just go right back to it. What's also been doing in this country since long before the white man ever touched the shores, long before Christopher Columbus allegedly landed here, long before Michael Marco Polo, and long before the Vikings ever tried to conquer this country, there were Muslims in this country. So it's important for us to stay focused. We're fighting for rights, we're marching for rights, we're marching for our civil rights and our protection. That we're, we're, we're asking our Commander-in-Chief, our President of the United States to fulfill this promise. Oh,